Do you remember a certain mustachioed Hollywood icon? He was rebellious, but quite possibly the most likable actor out there in the 70s and 80s. This hunk seamlessly captivated audiences for six decades plus. And you know the one, Mr. Burt Reynolds, the man who made the mustache popular again. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're chasing a bandit to try and learn some more about a true Hollywood legend. If you enjoy this bangin' bird bio, please make sure to give it a thumbs up for us. I know Bird would, if he knew how to work a computer. And also subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Alrighty, go long. A football star. Burton Leon Reynolds Jr. was born in Lansing, Michigan on February 11, 1936. His father, Burton the Sr., was an army colonel, so the family bounced around until Burt Sr. became a chief of police for the city of Riviera, Florida. And this is where Burt began to shine not only in the classroom, but more importantly on the football field. Being named first team all state as a fullback while he was just in 10th grade, he eventually earned a scholarship to Florida State, where he moved to running back before suffering a knee injury game one of his sophomore year. His bad luck continued when he was in a serious car accident, losing his spleen and injuring his other knee, essentially ending his football career. Curtain Call Burt began taking classes at junior college to keep up with his studies, and that's when an English teacher persuaded and then cast Burt as the lead. As Burt puts it, quote, I read two words and they gave me a lead. Well, thank goodness, too. He'd go on to win a scholarship to Hyde Park Playhouse after winning the 1956 Florida State Drama Award. And that lone English teacher is who Burt names the most influential person in his life. Amazing, really. Reynolds later went on to star in several football films, including The Longest Yard. Stick this in your trophy case. Both the original in 74 and the remake in 2005, as well as Semi Tough, co starring with Chris Christopherson in 1977. I guess you could say that he never left the stadium lights after all. Reynolds was also part owner of the Tampa Bay Bandits in the 80s, doing more than his part to pad the short lived three season life of the United States Football League. In addition to football, Reynolds loved everything about fast cars. He co owned a NASCAR team with Hal Needham and Paul Newman. Newman. Their team was called Skull Bandit Racing and first competed in the 1981 season. Their first car was number 22 with a rookie driver and ex-film stuntman, Stan Barrett at the helm. Experienced Harry Gant replaced Barrett halfway through the season and the car was changed to number 33. But the green and white Skull Bandit recorded nine wins for Burton Howe from 1981 until 1989. The pair even teamed up for a NASCAR movie loosely based on their experience, but more on that later. The Well-Known Unknown Actor Reynolds' television break was in the late 1950s, appearing as regulars in shows like Riverboat, Gunsmoke, Hawk, and Dan August. Burt's breakout film role was the macho, tough guy Lewis Medlock in the 1972 haunting film Deliverance. Don't beat this river. He often claimed that it was his best film, and most people credit it with making him a star. Deliverance was even inducted into the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress in 2008. Reynolds later lamented that he regretted posing nude for Cosmopolitan right before Deliverance hit the big screen. Icon of American Masculinity it was 1972 when Reynolds became the first man to pose nude for the center spread in Cosmopolitan. He did so because he thought it would be a funny joke, but instead he became an instant sex symbol. All 1.6 million copies of the magazine sold out before Deliverance even hit the theaters. He now thought the magazine spread distracted from his role in the film and worried that his co-stars, notably John Voight, were shortlisted in the awards because of his actions. Then he pulled the most 1970s move ever by releasing a country music album in 1973 titled Ask Me What I Am. Ask me what I am. The album even came with a double-sized poster of Reynolds in a black jumpsuit and cowboy hat. 
Reynolds also owned a nightclub in downtown Atlanta, Georgia in the 1970s for a year. Burt's Palace was located in the Omni International Hotel. The floor of the club was made of stained glass and featured Reynolds' face with the slogan, Burt's Joint. Now that sounds like a party. For the money, for the glory, and for the fun. But mostly for the money. And we all know what sent Burt to a new stratosphere, 1977's Smokey and the Bandit. For the money, for the glory, and for the fun. Mostly for the money. Bo Darville was one of the most successful roles of all time for Burt. Thanks to Smokey and the Bandit, the Pontiac Trans Am car sales doubled, and they made a second and third movie as well. Burt even had a single reach number 88 on the Billboard Hot 100 singles in 1980 with the song Let's Do Something Cheap and Superficial, which was from Smokey and the Bandit 2 in 1980. Fun fact, did you know Smokey and the Bandit beat Star Wars in the box office on May 30th, 1977? No! The whopping figures were 1.7 million to 1.5 million, respectively. Unfortunately for Smokey, this only lasted a week, and Star Wars went on to make history. Burt got his Hollywood Walk of Fame star in 1978. A few other notable 80s films you'll certainly remember include The Cannonball Run in 1981, a comedic car chase epic starring Farrah Fawcett and Roger Moore, among many. And Burt and longtime pal Dom DeLuise are so fantastic together. The outtakes from this film are outrageously funny. Then he strutted his stuff alongside Dolly Parton in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas in 1982. And this again was another box office triumph. Finally, Bird put his NASCAR knowledge to the test with 1983's Stroker Ace. Unfortunately, Bert turned down Jack Nicholson's great role of Garrett Breedlove in terms of endearment to do this project instead, and Stroker Ace would go on to flop at the box office, and Reynolds claimed that it was the movie where he lost many of his fans. After this, he was involved in some poorly rated and unsuccessful films, some of which also happened to be dangerous. Stunt Goes Wrong During the filming of City Heat in 1984, Reynolds was allowed to do some of his own stunts. During one of the takes, he was struck in the face by a metal chair, shattering his jaw. He was in extreme pain, developed TMJ, which then caused him to lose 40 pounds because he couldn't eat solid foods. Because of his rapid weight loss, many people speculated that he had AIDS, and he would spend years trying to dispel these rumors. Because of the pain, he also developed an addiction to pain pills. Luckily, he did overcome that urge. Unfortunately, he dealt with the pain from this injury for the rest of his life. Crashing Career by the late 80s, Reynolds' film career was puttering, so he returned to the television screen. For his role in Evening Shade, he earned an Emmy in 1991 and a Golden Globe in 92. And Burt also worked as a director on the series. Reynolds also notably turned down some pretty huge film roles, including Han Solo, James Bond, Edward Lewis in Pretty Woman. The role he regretted not playing the most was James Bond. He turned it down because he didn't think an American should be playing Bond, and producers could not convince him otherwise. Burt even dabbled in animated films and was terrific as Charlie B. Barkin in 1989's All Dogs Go to Heaven. A Phoenix from the Ashes Burt enjoyed a late 90s resurgence. He was nominated for an Oscar for his Jack Horner in Boogie Nights. Director Paul Thomas Anderson was adamant that Reynolds be the man for the role and asked him seven times before he finally agreed. Burt was apparently extremely angry about the persistence at first and chewed Anderson out. PTA then told Reynolds, if you can do that in the movie, you'll get nominated for an Academy Award. Just one of the best directors in the biz making a gut call for a Hail Mary. Let's get personal. Burt's personal life was a little hectic. He first married comedian and actress Judy Karn, but the couple later divorced. Then Burt dated a few different women, including singer Dinah Shore, and most notably his Smokey and the Bandit co-star Sally Field. He went as far to call Sally the love of his life, but the couple did not stay together. Instead, he married WKRP actress Lonnie Anderson in 1988, and their relationship was a disaster to say the least. It ended in a volatile 
difficult and costly divorce. Anderson and Reynolds had one adopted son named Quentin. Burt went on to create the Burt Reynolds Institute for Actors in Florida, where he actually taught some acting classes. Because of his many business ventures, Burt experienced some financial problems despite being such a huge star. He declared bankruptcy in the mid-90s and eventually had to sell his Florida mansion. In 2014, he held an auction selling some of his personal belongings and movie memorabilia. A Resilient Star Reynolds never stopped acting. His final appearance will be released posthumously in 2021 in the film Defining Moments. No one can deny the impact that Burt had on the entertainment world. Appearing in over 90 feature films with several important TV arcs as well. Sadly, Burt passed away at 82 on September 6, 2018 from cardiac arrest. But we will never forget that mischievous grin or that glorious mustache. So get in the comments and let's remember an icon together. What was your personal favorite Burt Reynolds movie? Did you watch him on Gunsmoke or another TV series? Well, let us know in the comments below. We read them all. And if you enjoyed revisiting the life of Burt Reynolds with us, consider clicking that thumbs up icon and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a throwback video. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks so much for watching.